All right, everybody. It is a blistering 45 out here. Just got back from picking up this Buddy 50. It's pretty rainy out. Um, we're going to be doing a 70cc kit on it. The guy is sick of getting uh, passed by cars. So, yeah. So I'd like to unbox and prepare our 70cc kit for tomorrow. So you want to get a, um, for the Buddy 50cc, you want to get a 10 millimeter wrist pin um, kit. And this is a 70cc kit. It's a PRCK1. Um, so aluminum head. NCY, cool. There's the meat and potatoes of her. Boom. All right. Bunch of things inside the piston itself. You're going to have your circlips. Um, you're also going to have your wrist pin and a new wrist pin bearing. Um, so you're not. You know, you don't want to lose that stuff. Um, but this is really what we're getting after here. Um, our piston and cylinder. It does have some oil in it already, but we're going to end up adding some to that. Um, it does not come with the studs for the exhaust. you got to swap those out. I, you can use bolts, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so if you want to give this a look, uh, everything should be nice and cross-hatched in there. Um, you know, uh, there's really, I've never really seen any reason to clean these up. They come pretty pretty nice but you can just kind of rub your finger in there along those different ports make sure there's no crazy edges hanging out that are going to scratch up side of your piston um so it comes without the rings installed in it um and without the circlips installed in it um this piston you do kind of want to clean up in here with a file um i'll probably have short clip on that tomorrow um, but more importantly is right over here this is pretty sharp so you just want to very quickly take like a round file just kind of quickly go around the edges there um, the back side's pretty good but you know it doesn't hurt just clean it up you know you don't want any sharp edges when you're firing up a motor for the first time um, just kind of deburring it I mean it would do it over time but yeah um, so this arrow everybody asked me about this arrow um, Basically, in a two-stroke motor, you're having exhaust, or you're going to have uh, intake gases, so you know fuel and air coming up through these ports, basically in a channel on the side of the cylinder, and then they get they come out um, above the cylinder. So what these holes in the piston are for are basically to help get that mixture um, you know uh, up to the top a bit quicker um, so you want to have these ports um, basically you know this arrow back to it this arrow is going to point towards the exhaust um, so that being said um, we're just going to uh, install the rings now um, so that way you know, starting on this tomorrow and break a ring first thing in the morning so um, in this packet you're going to have your base gasket as well as a head gasket and a set of rings for it um, so just like so this is your base gasket um, that goes on just like that you know we'll, we'll put that on tomorrow um, but the old one may be good and stuck to the block of the motor. Um, so we'll, we'll go over that too tomorrow. But basically, if it's on there really nice and none of it has came off of your old cylinder, they're the same. You can reuse it. I mean, I don't really recommend it. It is a pain in the butt to scrape the thing off there, but we'll make that call tomorrow. Um, so. Next thing you have is going to be your head gasket. Um, this guy right here, you want the ridge or the point of that kind of dome right here facing up. So that means this always. Um, the cylinder head itself, you're gonna wanna put on like that, kind of just, you know, like fits the same. So no big deal there. Um, yeah, 
so everything's here. Um, like I said, we can pop the rings on right now. Make our life a little bit easier tomorrow when we go to install this 70 kit and that buddy uh, that you just saw in the truck. These rings, um, they are identical. Um, you're gonna see some markings on them, KH47 on both. Does not matter whether you put this one above this one uh, because they're identical. Um, the thing that does matter is the numbers face up. Um, and also, if you notice in here, there's kind of a cutout in the ring. It is for a locating pin that is on the piston here and here um, these two pins you know you, you can't you physically can't put it in. I mean I guess you could if you slam it with a hammer but you can't put the piston in unless these rings are located properly um, this scraping the base gasket and installing these two little circ clips um, in the side of the piston are the hardest things that you've got to do. Everything else is just nut and bolt stuff. There is no timing with the two-stroke motor. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess also up jetting the carb, not a huge deal if you've done it a million times, but you know, those are your kind of four tasks that are hard um, for somebody that's never done it before. So to put on a ring, um, they make tools and such, but basically you kind of want to roll this thing on there. Um, do the bottom one first. It's okay if it falls into the top groove. Um, it can be a little bit difficult, but you do not want to get too, sh like you don't want to stretch these too much. This is like a spring steel or something like that. Um, you know, no bigger than the piston. And even that feels like it's gonna break every time. I was told that like some guys break pistons or break piston rings every time. Well, I almost broke that one, but. So top hole, not the end of the world, but you want to get down to the bottom. So kind of same procedure with it. Kind of walk one edge down, pick up on the other and kind of just very slightly work the whole thing down. I guess, you know, some guys could break these. A little bit easier if you have a pick. I'm just working my hands, but boom, down there. Cool. So like I was saying before, that locating pin, if it's misaligned, see like I, I can't push it down. There's always a ridge there. So it's just not gonna go in the hole because we're talking a few thou here that, you know, is clearance between the piston and the cylinder of the piston. So you gotta locate that and then press it down. Um, it's not gonna stay though. You know, you gotta do that when you're slipping it in. Um, so. I'll do the other one it is offset a little bit and this is basically so these rings stay located on either side of the ports um, so you know if it was in like that and the ring would spring out get caught in the port rip it off and then boom motor's done so uh, all two strokes have these little locating pins the top one Um, the last thing that you got to check, or maybe this should have been the first thing, um, this G right here, um, embossed on the piston, that, that's for good. It's a, it's a good piston. I, I will assume it's good. Although, look at, I'm seeing a B too. Maybe it was bad. Only time will tell. Uh, tomorrow. I'm going to put it in, fire it up. Um, I guess the last thing I want to talk about is, depending on where you are, you know, I mean, up here in New England, doing a 70 kit like this, no exhaust uh, on the bike, um, you know, stock airbox, uh, we're probably about like an 85 main jet, um, buddy 50s come stock, I believe it's a 75 or something like that. Um, so 85 should be just fine. Um, we'll try that, do a couple plug chops and yeah, should be good. Cool. We'll try it in the morning. Everybody, bringing the Buddy 50 down to the shop. We're gonna put in that 70 cc kit today. It's a balmy 40 degrees out today. Father says the uh, shop's a little bit of a mess, uh, so maybe we'll do it outside. I'm not certain, but anyways, just had 
a pretty good backpack. We've got all the parts as well. And we're ready to rock and roll. Since the lift's a little buried in the trailer, we're going to do it like this. Uh, basically, on the here is going to be our cylinder. We're going to take this plastic off, this exhaust off. On this side, we're going to remove those two screws, pop the carb off of there. And we're replacing that one. A couple of screws on this side as well. And boom, we're in. So we're going to start with taking off the spark plug. I do have another video on doing this. Pull the boot off. Uh, spark plug wrench is actually underneath the seat in that purple bag. Spin it loose. And let's take a look at it, you know, kind of see how the bike's running. Very, very clean. Hasn't been in there too long. Next thing you're going to do is take the two acorn cap nuts off the exhaust manifold. If they're real rusty, they can be a problem, but this one isn't too bad. This is uh, this pipe's been off recently, so just spin them loose. I do want to apologize for the blur in the bottom left. Uh, I'm going to wipe the camera eventually, I promise. Next thing to do is to take the two 12 millimeter bolts out of the side. They support the weight of the exhaust. You can just let it drop. Um, there's a hose up above um, that has like a little kind of tang that holds on. You see it pop loose there. Um, just rest it off to the side. That's fine. Don't need to take it completely out of the way. And next, we're going to take off this Phillips head screw. Um, these two 8 millimeter uh, socket caps. This side piece just pops right off. You have two clips that kind of hold it on. Just yank it back. This rubber hose right here needs to come off. You just pry it back. Um, this is supplying hot air to the carb so it doesn't freeze. You've got like a little groove that sits in the plastic. Behind here, you've got a top bolt and there's one down below. Just remove them both and let this little bracket dangle. The next thing is this plastic shroud. It's there for cooling. All the air from the fan passes through it. Take that off. Next, you're going to crack uh, all four of your cylinder head um, stud nuts off of there. They are 10 millimeter. Not on there with a ton of torque. Um, just get them loose and then you can spin them off by hand. The cylinder head comes off, a little bit of wiggling. Behind that, you've got your cylinder head gasket, aluminum. You want to whack the cylinder a little bit and it'll pop right off there. Break the seal on the gasket. And a little bit of wiggling and it slides right off. want to inspect parts as they come off. The carbon in the exhaust port. This is the gasket material you're going to need to scrape off. You want to pull out that circlip. A pair of needle nose will rip it right out of there. These are single use so once it's out, throw it away. The piston um, wrist pin is going to get pushed out. You only need to take out one circlip. Give that a push to something smaller than the diameter of the inside of um, the circlip and pull it all the way out. If you plan on saving that piston, maybe catch it. This pin looks like it's got some heat discoloration on it. Make sure you take out your old wrist pin bearing. The kit comes with a new one. The exhaust studs. 
Stud puller is super helpful, but there are other ways to get it off. Um, you're gonna wanna spin both of these out of there. Um, if they're not super rusty, reuse them. Um, use them stud rather than, you know, just putting a bolt into the new cylinder. It's a lot easier when you go to put the exhaust on. Um, so I definitely recommend pulling these out. The kit does not come with new ones, but the holes are threaded the same as the stock cylinder. You can, you know, cut a head off of a bolt and make a new stud. Um, I've done that plenty of times. I'm sure there's videos out there on how to do it. Piston circlips are some of the hardest things to get in, um, but the main thing that you need to remember is that the open end faces either towards the crankshaft or up towards the top of the piston, um, so that way they do not collapse and fall out. Tons of videos on how to get these things in, uh, and they call them Jesus clips for a reason. Ping! Pop your base gasket on. Be very gentle with this. Sometimes the studs, you know, they're not perfectly straight, so you gotta work it on evenly and slowly. Next, we're gonna put on the cylinder one ring at a time, um, try and get the top started first and then press the bottom with your fingers. Hard to get good footage of this, um, but when it's in, it's in. Um, and wiggle it all the way down and boom, you've got a 70 kit. That's all the hard parts, well, other than jet in the carb. But on your head gasket, again, it's you know a little delicate. You do have to bend the studs a little bit to, to get it to go down all the way. And it's copper, um, so it you know it's kind of bitey into the threads, um, but very slowly and evenly. And um, you do want the domed edge facing up. cylinder head on, put it on uh, just the same contour profile as the cylinder. Um, I'm going to screw all your nuts back on um, and then don't quote me on this because uh, I've just been doing it for so long I know what they should be torqued to um, but I believe it is 14 foot pounds. Um, the buddy manual is available online. Torque them to stock specs. I should note as well that it is important to go in a cross pattern, slowly torquing up. Now we'll go back on with our plastic shrouds. This one goes on pretty easily, not really to align other than there's two bolts on the opposite side. Put the side cover back on and those two clips, you gotta start those first and then work the back on. Um, this you know, does take a little bit of patience but it should go back on fairly smoothly. So when putting the exhaust uh, back on, you do want to make sure that that gasket is still in there. You can remute, reuse it many times. Um, get one of the hanger bolts started, then get the other one in. And you do want to make sure that the rubber grommet in the back, I'll show it to you here, this guy is seated on the fender. Put your two acorn cap nuts back on. Get those tight. They don't have to be crazy tight, but give them a, give them a good turn. Now we'll go ahead and put our spark plug in. Um, make sure it's gapped right. Thumbnail fits in between the electrode and the little tang there. That's all you need. Take, uh, if you have uh, BPR 7HS, you do want to take off the top little fitting there because um, it uses the threads to attach. Go ahead, get it tightened up, crush that crush washer.
Now, for jetting the carb, I highly suggest that you watch my carburetor video. I'll put a link in the description. Um, this one has a failing fuel stop, so that's why I'm holding the float there. But this is the main jet. Um, we're going to want to swap that out for an 85. Depending on your region, you may have to go up to a 90, not move it too much off of, you know, 75 where the buddy sits stock. Um, but uh, that's why the importance of putting in a new plug is so you can see how it's running. Um, years of experience, I, I was always a little, um, I don't know, scared to do jetting at first, but once you pick it up, uh, it's pretty easy. I highly suggest uh, you get a um, jet kit. You can call up Scooter Works. I believe it's a five millimeter jet that these bikes take, um, but they'll give you a range. Um, and playing with the jets, swapping them back and forth, will give you great insight on how to you know, tune it correctly. Um, running too lean or too rich for a short period of time is not gonna hurt anything on these little motors. Um, so you'll know when it's right, that's for sure. Um, yeah, get everything tightened back up and give it a fire. If you like this video, what are you doing? Like it, subscribe, share with your friends. Happy scooting.